We are going live. I'm going to press the record button on our Are podcast. we live to everyone or just live to us? I clicked public. Awesome. So it should be to every person. Okay. As always, please give me I a I want moment. to be able to change my name to, from R. Todd Turner to the awesomest person in the world. How do I change my name? I don't know. How do I you, can't figure that out. How do you change your name from Todd Turner to the awesomest person in the world? Oh, no, wait. There it is again. That I, happens all the time. Oh, Dad, we just, we're no longer, wait, we're recording. Yeah, we're yeah. recording. We're good. Okay. I, we are live. I think we are to where people can see us. Yeah, there's a person watching us. Hello, person that's watching us. I don't all know right. who you are, but welcome. Okay, cool. Yes, we are ready to go. We're good, Dad. I've got my goodies behind me, and Hannah's got her sewing machine. Sewing machine, giant glass of water. Whoop, whoop. Textbook for school. There you go. And I have a um, a box of Marvel Toms that my microphone's on. So we golden. <laughs> All right. You ready? Yes. Go for it. What episode are we on again? 19. 19. Right? All right. Oh, wow. 19. Get through the teens. Then we will, we will have defeated teen pregnancy. No. That's not how it works? That's not how that Dad, just start right. the podcast. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, internet dwellers, and all people out there in the ether. Welcome to the recording of episode 19 of Sis and Big Pop's Culture. I am Big Pop, Todd Turner, the most awesomest person in the world, and Facts. Mosaic Fan Art. And as always, my lovely co host. Hi, friends. I am Hannah Joe, aka Sis. And together we are an adult daughter and father duo. We dive into all things geek, nerd, and fandom. Every episode that we do is family friendly. Okay, Dad. Family we have a lot of friendly. things. Yeah. Anybody can watch this. We rated E for everyone, my dudes. So. Ding, ding. <laughs> I don't know what that means. What That's the rated that? E for everyone music. Ching, we... ching, ching. <laughs> sounded what? like Mandalorian is what it sounded like. We have things to do today as per the usual. We're going to start out with some news. Um, we're going to talk about what we're binging and your pull list. Um, we have a comic book. We're going to talk about a comic book for the first time in a couple weeks. We're going to talk about the comic book Black Lightning. And then we are going to talk about a film for everyone to enjoy, much like we did last week. I don't week. know if it's for everyone, but we'll talk about that when Why, we get there. Would it not be for everyone? We'll just talk about it when we get there. It's rated G. And we'll talk about it when we get there. Okay, well, we'll talk about it when we get there. We're going to uh, talk about The Princess and the Frog. Yay. Don't matter what you look like. Don't matter what you wear. We got them all in here. Yeah, and if we have here. time, we might even discuss at the end some more WandaVision. As always, Wanda we have vision. to. I have so many opinions. I have two post-it notes full of opinions. Oh my gosh, post-it notes. Which I have were all of the post-it notes. In Kentucky. No way. Yep, Cynthia. I knew that the glue was mixed up. Here's a random fact for you out there who's thinking, oh no, this thing that I'm working on sucks and I'm never going to be able to do it right. The guy who created post-it notes, the glue on post-it notes, was trying to figure out a super adhesive glue that would make everything stick together. And instead, he made a very light adhesive glue, which is what's on the back of sticky notes. And he got paid seven cents for that. because no Really? No, I have no idea. I made that up. But oh, it was Dad. probably like, you know, all of his uh, intellectual property was the owner of 3M. I don't know. Nerd news! Okay. okay, something I'm stoked about, and I yeah. have the theme song stuck in my head ever since I read it. Bum, 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 bum. Powerpuff Girls is being optioned <laughs> right now by the CW for a live remake. It's going to be like Riven Rivendale. <laughs> no, I did it. It's going to be like Riv <laughs> Riverdale. I know it. You said Rivendale the last time. I did. Time, I, I like, did that okay. last time. It has nothing to do with the Lord <laughs> of the Rings. No. Or like, I hope it's not like Winx Club. Because I watched that Winx Fate thing and it was no good, friends. That I mean, that's not true. That it, yeah, it was a cartoon. Which is funny because one of the voices of one of the characters in there is one of the voices in the movie we're going to talk about. Really? Who? Yeah, I don't remember. I just saw it. Oh. Yeah. But, but yeah, Powerpuff Girls. And you know what? Was, if, a, if an organization can cartoon do Network. a Powerpuff... No. Yes, if, Cartoon if, Network owned did, Powerpuff Girls yeah, at the beginning. But if there is a if there now, 
if I had to choose a like a company to revamp Powerpuff Girls, I would choose the CW. Really? I would think that that's a wise choice. That's a wise move. Which is interesting because I've been really talking up um, the Wonder Woman, the new Wonder Woman, and they optioned mm -hmm. it to CW and they said, no, thanks. Oh, that was a poor choice. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I, it, I don't Are, know. Is they have an entire on? Arrowverse and they're all linked together. Even the Black Lightning, which we're going to talk about later, um, has a show in there. But yeah, I, I think the Powerpuff Girls. Uh, it could be dope. Could be fun. Could be fun. It could. It depends because every time that they revamp something now, it has some like weird macabre, like dark twist. Well, but it, it was no dark sense. anyway. I that mean, cartoon yeah. was dark. It just was like, you Cute. know, sort of like um, what was the one with the crimson chin? Timmy Turner was that whatever? The Fairly Odd Parents. It was yeah. dark. Yeah. All of those cartoons back then really had a little bit of a dark edge to them. Okay, well, maybe I'm just I'm looking back at at it with the lens of fondness there you go and, and a lot of times depending upon yeah a child who watches it they don't catch all the stuff like that so yeah i i think it i'll I watch would it when hope it comes. that it would be fun and that i wouldn't feel creepy being a 53 year old guy watching it that's my I mean, issue yeah i'm I, I can vibe with that dad because sometimes as a, a creepy guy 25 year old it's girl hard watching enough for it. me to watch an anime because i'm thinking this is i don't know that this is appropriate for a guy who's my age do you know Anywho. what you could watch if you needed an appropriate anime what she and the princesses of power. Um, see, that's even creepier. <laughs> no, it's not. It is. I'm it's not for everyone. Home. Yeah, E for everyone, but 53-year-old guys, <laughs> that just seems weird. <laughs> so, um, the, I don't know if you saw, have you ever heard of the game Disney Villainous? I saw this. I've never played it. What, what console? So this is like a tabletop game. This is a tabletop game. Oh, it's a game. tabletop game. I'm pretty like sure. Like a board game or like uh -huh. an RPG? Uh, might be an oh, RPG. excuse me. RPG. Role-playing game. I believe that's what it is. Yes. Because okay. they've, they're releasing an expansion, so I'm assuming it's tabletop, and it's called um, Despicable Plots. And you can play as Gaston, <gasps> uh, Lady Tremaine. Isn't that her uh -oh. name from Cinderella? Uh -oh. Yeah, Lady Tremaine. She's trying. So, um, and a, um, the her. villain in Black Cauldron, which I never saw, but a lot of people yeah, love Yeah, we that never movie. watched Black Cauldron. Well, it's because it seemed a little bit... We watched Arthur, and I think that's I think it's they're similar. The the animation no. is similar. Yeah, Black Cauldron was one. I guess it never really did though come out. It was never released from the Disney Vault. Um, when you were a kid, so it's not something that we watched. True. Yeah, but I saw that that game is coming out, and you can play as those players. That would be so I, fun. It might be fun. Yeah, I'm up for it. This, okay, I'm, this isn't a piece of news, but something that it made me think of. Is that okay? Yeah, it is news to me. There's this board game that you can get called Quilts and Calicos, where you it has to do with quilts, quilts and cats, and you, cats lay on it. That that I don't know. I don't know I how to react to, to that. I want. <laughs> that sounds. Doesn't that sound like so much fun? <laughs> no. <It> just... <laughs> I don't think it does. I want to play it. I don't know if you know this or not, but Grandma Turner, of course, you know she quilted all the time. That's my dad's mom. Yes. So it would be nothing for us to go to her house, and she would have a huge quilt rack, and that's what they would do. That's they would so come cool. over, and all the ants would come together, and they would work, and they would quilt. That's uh, so but fun. No cats were involved. Well, None. this is like you have to. It's like a pattern game, <laughs> and you have to like put the pattern pieces, and like they have mm -hmm. to be side certain things, and you get points for certain. Sounds things. like a new Thanksgiving a, uh, Day game to play with Uncle lays Wally. On it. I don't know if Uncle Wally would like that. He'd probably be like, this is lame. Like, you just <laughs> you did. You never know. If he wins, he would enjoy if it. He beats me at 11, and that's a game I taught him how to play. Well, there you go. Yes. So, I'm. Um, that's cool. Board game king, Uncle Wally. Shout out. So, did you watch the new Zack Snyder trailer? I did. I haven't. You haven't watched it? it? I couldn't. I didn't have time. Oh, it came right. out early. But I just so, saw bits and pieces of it where like Superman's like going, ah, screaming yeah, he's like, or something. In like green. Well, I wouldn't know. I talk. <laughs> colorblind, so green, whatever. That's a bad what colorblind shade of joke, gray Dad. is that? Shade That's a of bad gray. joke, man. Like my beard shade of gray. Anyway. So I was talking to my, um, they're not my roommates, my next door neighbors, mm -hmm. uh, Mickey and Timmy, and 
um, in the original Justice League, there's like a short little block of time where Batman has a dream. Yeah, you you texted me this. I texted you that. Timmy thinks that that's going to be about an hour and a half long. I can't believe that. You really I, like, but they cut so much of the understand. stuff, and so well, I'm curious if it's like that weird dream sequence is like a lot of stuff that they cut because that dream sequence was phenomenal. You're making a so face. Like, tell me, I'm tell me what you have to say. Face. Something else I didn't realize. So okay. I told you last week that the guy who was in the blacklist, they did motion capture for him to be Martian Manhunter. Yes. Remember, P.S. I don't know if you realize this or not, but I didn't realize he is the general or colonel or whatever that's in the first Superman movie. It's the same guy. Really? So apparently the Martian oh, Manhunter no. has been there the whole time, posing as a general, just Which is like what he does, like in the Supergirl. Supergirl show. Yeah, because he like is he's not he like works for like some weird government agency. He's not like he a works general. for um oh what's it called? I can't remember. Not Atlas. Um, I don't know what it's called. I, I haven't know. watched Supergirl in a million years. Well, I used to know, and if we weren't talking about it, I could just name it right off the. You're top just of my gonna. Head. We're gonna be done with this, and then an hour later, you you're go, just gonna I'll go, text it to Here me. it is. But anyway, so yeah, so three eighteen. So March eighteenth, when this comes out, rated R. I don't know how long, like long. I, it's four and a half hours, I think, is what Timmy wow. said. God, Isn't that so great. long? Yeah. Here's. Do you want to know something about March eighteenth? What. My qualifying exam for my doctor my doctoral program is due on March seventeenth. So you know what I'm about to do on March eighteenth. Sit watch and watch all of it. I hope it's it's going to be depressing. I'm afraid. I'll knit something while I watch it. And have a cat. And no, I don't kidding. have a cat. I'll just okay. Picked up a pick a giant stuffed animal and just put it on like my like belly or like hold it while I knit. Gotcha. It'll just be, it'll be just like having a cat. There you go. Hilarious. So what else you got? <laughs> um, They're making, I don't know who they are. Let me pull up the information that I have. Um, making a new what? Regency and Amazon Prime video okay. are doing a new spin on Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Wait, and you guess... mean Angelina Jolie, Brad Pitt movie? They're not yes. even together anymore. Okay, different people. Are you ready? Okay. Donald Glover. Yeah. And Phoebe Waller-Bridge. I don't know who the Phoebe is. She is an actress in well, an Amazon an Prime Fleabag. Never saw that. You probably wouldn't like it. There's a lot of like fourth wall breaks. The cuts are really weird. And no one, it's for grownups. Gotcha. It's for grownups. Okay. And it's it's sad. It's You're right, I an interesting like it. way on like how she copes with loss after... Mm -hmm. One of her friends passes away. I loved um, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I Same. thought that was a great movie. I loved oh my it. goodness. What a good movie. I'm trying to think. Yeah. I own I own like 12 movies. Like a mm -hmm. DVD. And that's one of them? And that's one do of they them. All, do they all have secrets at the end? Like Easter eggs that you have to find? No. <laughs> and, and if you listen to it, it's somebody <laughs> Don't from the blink. future telling you not to do something? <laughs> like, that's yeah. wild. Doctor Who. Yeah. They, so they if if you if you me. have Frozen, iRobot, Burlesque, Zombieland, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and there's something weird in it's because of me. Sorry, that's my fault. Nice, nice. Thank you. You're but welcome. it also means that you're gonna come to the rescue and save the universe. As I knew I you had it in you all along. Dad, I knew you were gonna grow up and save the universe. So welcome. I don't know what we do without you. <laughs> hey, did you see that Chris Evans is going to be a villain in a new Russo Brothers action spy thriller? Okay, what's called it called? The Gray Man. So the Russo Brothers, if everybody doesn't know, they're the ones behind like Avengers Endgame, Civil War. Um, uh, the, Winter Soldier. Nah, yeah, Winter Soldier. Yeah, Winter Soldier, um, uh, the Infinity War. So mm -hmm. they are teaming up with uh, Chris Evans again, and he's going to be a villain. That's so cool. He plays a convincing villain. Spoilers. But what if you haven't seen this, not a spoiler. Knives yeah. Out. He was good. Oh, that's a great movie. But he's we need to funny. watch that. It's humorous, too. Um, Do you... He was also a bad guy in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. And he the wasn't whatever. a good guy. I know. He was. He was a reformed good guy in Snowpiercer. 
I like Snowpiercer. Do you remember when we watched that? That's 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 all oh, for my adults only. Goodness, that was yeah. bonkers. It was also in a movie called wow. Push, which I really liked. Did I watch um, that? I don't know. It's don't a superhero sort of. Um, it's, it was, I liked it. Well, it didn't is Dakota get Fanning in that one? There's one that of, one I think movie. so. Okay. I think she is. Mm-hmm. Where baby yeah. Dakota Fanning is in it. Uh, maybe. Or a relative. Who knows? Not me. What else, I don't know. What else you got? Um, Gina Carano. Out. Not being in any of the yeah. uh, Star Wars stuff anymore. Right. I, she tweeted some stuff that people don't ag- agree with, and yeah, and that's the way the world tumbles. So that's a bummer. Um, I wonder what they're going to do with her character, or if they will just, you know, recast, recast, just... or write her out. Yeah, I'm I don't not 100 percent sure. Well, weren't um, they making it so that she would have her own TV show? I have no idea. I Wasn't think that's attention. what they were going because they like when we talked. Well, if about... that's the case, they could just choose a different character. Yeah, that's true. I mean, there's a thousand of them out there. The biggest, one of the hot comic books right now is called Star Wars High Republic. Um, they're up to issue three. And um, who's the, uh, what, my, what comic book entity is doing this? Marvel. They own okay. the, because oh, it's. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I'm, I, so, I can vibe with that. Um, and a lot of that is just new because they've never really touched on the High Republic before. And it's hot. So they're like to issue three. And I was like, hey, I think I'll get issue one. But you know me, I don't like to get third printings or stuff and it's hard to get a hold of so i'm giggling at you yeah so i'm just i'm not i don't wait i'll wait i'll yeah. wait yeah well, um they also cast a villain for captain marvel 2 her name is zawe ashton i don't know her what does she look like uh i'm gonna google her woman. face i don't Here know her go I'm she's been google in stuff that i've face. never heard of before she's english i know that much but um so the villain okay. is a female marvel i'm wondering who it's gonna be also, Monica Rambo, the character that plays her, is in it. So you know she's going to be in it. Who knows what she will be? Um, if you guys uh, have been photon. paying attention, to, yeah. If you haven't been paying that's what attention she'll be. to WandaVision, you're, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're funny. I don't. We don't know what Monica Rambo will be. Uh, she'll be photon. Yeah. Well, will she or will she not? Well, who knows? Um, will she get? She'll get her powers at the end of the that. movie. I have opinions about that. It's on a you post-it are note. So opinionated. We will get there. At the very end, because we're not doing WandaVision spoilers right now. Gotcha. All right. Well, there's a Disney Plus has got a new show coming out in pro, in process or whatever called Iron Heart, which is a female, younger. Is it like a Viking Iron thing? Man. Oh, okay. Oh no, I know Iron Heart because Iron Heart is this is another Wanda. This isn't a WandaVision spoiler. This is a comic book fan lore theory. Who Iron Heart dates visions? I have no idea. I don't know. Son? Daughter? Because it's a girl. No, it's she's a girl. Well, I don't know. She's a Ironheart. The girl, there's a girl playing Ironheart right now. Right. There were it's called the Young Avengers, which by the way, that comic book series has just gone through the roof. Um I used to Vivian. Have them all. Vivian. Yes. She Vivian was one of the uh synthesoids that Vision created as and she's Viv, she's still alive. She's still around. Viv the synthesoid. Yep, Viv the Synthesoid. If you didn't know, welcome to the wacky family tree of the I, Vision and Scarlet Witch. The only reason I know about Ironheart is because I'm getting TikToks about all of Wanda you and Vision's. The flipping TikToks. I'm getting TikToks about so much Wanda Vision stuff right now, Dad. And Viv is a Synthesoid of Vision, and she kissed Ironheart in one of the things and that was what they were talking about and that's why i know who ironheart is the end well they the young avengers i'm tempted to go back and purchase them all they're just but they're so expensive but it's they're popping got right now well it's because everybody's getting introduced i mean the two children tommy um, and billy and billy are in it um kate bishop which is uh basically scott lang's daughter ant-man's daughter mm-hmm. and uh, hawkeye's daughter are in it um yeah so i don't know i owned them bought them for like two dollars and now they're going for like a hundred and i don't even have them but that's all right <laughs> that's it for my news no more that's news. It for you my got news. news no more news what are you binging no nothing you're not watching anything not really i've gone down the rabbit hole i watched another episode of stuff of legend mm. yes the the dungeons and dragon youtube episode yeah. thing where they the puppets where the puppets act out the the yeah, campaign. Yeah, yeah. I'm, they, Dad, I'm jiving with you. They were getting a little bit of grief 
um, because one of the puppets is rather well endowed. Uh oh. But the lady playing her is not um, skinny mini. And actually, so a lot of the D and D. Uh, fans were going i can't believe you do that and it's disrespectful and and then i was listening to a, a reviewer who does reviews of, of stuff and she's like wait a minute i'm a big woman i mean so what you're saying is that i can't play dnd so there it is you can't make nobody happy you know what i mean you have to be you just extreme. live your life dad exactly just it's live a your fun life. it's not for kids um it's i'd say pg-13 but it is in this last campaign, two of them got ended up not making it through it. Oh no! Had, Do they have yes. to roll new characters? No, they have to go to the cleric. They have to sit out a day, and they have to go to the cleric. But it's funny because they they're trying to find information about what's happening to the missing people, and um, in order to do that, they have to perform at this uh, carnival. Like somebody has to have knives thrown at like them. Bugs somebody life. has to walk the type rope. Yes, and. Uh, Someone has to, it's hilarious. The The roles did not, we find, the first one was rolled. Oh no, Explain crit that, fail. Hannah. Explain that. Okay, so in Dungeons and Dragons, you roll a 20-sided dice to see how well you succeed at something. You add modifiers mm -hmm. based on your character statistics. Like if you're a ballerina, of course you're going to have better grace than a person who plays football. Right? To gotcha. bring it back to game plan of last... Uh, Way to go. Episode Full circle. Eve, you're welcome. Um, so the best roll you can get is a 20. And if you roll, a, it's called a nat 20, then whatever you're trying to do, you succeed. Unless it's something that you can't do. Like if you're like, I'm going to jump off this building and fly, and you roll a nat 20, you're not going to fly because you can't do that. You're just not going to splat very hard. Um, <laughs> we talked about that, didn't we? Yes, we did. If you roll a... Uh, a one that's a critical failure or crit fail and um you just you you can't do it so like if you're a rogue and so a rogue like has like lock picking abilities is very stealthy and sneaky and you go up to a trap and the rogue is like i'm gonna make sure that this trap we don't get into it and you roll a one well y you done did sprung the trap and everybody's coming for you there you go all right, so that's what it means. The guy had rolled a one, and that's needless hysterical. to say, he, he didn't make it through the campaign. That's so funny. So yeah, that's about it. Nothing else going on. Uh, I'm not really watching anything. I'm just falling down the YouTube uh, rabbit hole and watching some a lot of stuff on uh, Office, just stuff about that because we talked mm. about Office in my small group last week. But fun. But no, what about you? What are you doing? Um, I'm on the last season of Big Bang Theory. Oh yeah. I'm on season twelve of Big Bang Theory. And? So, I mean, I don't know. It's it's ending. It it feels very like predictable at this point. Like I know every story beat that's gonna happen. But so I it's mean, I don't I don't hate that. I'm kind of here for it. It's something innocuous that I can have in the background while I'm knitting that I don't have to pay attention to. And I'm here gotcha. for it. But Dad, today's what? Valentine's Day. When we're recording oh, it is. this, you're right. I so what's that mean? am going to watch every single to all of the boys I loved before movie today. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what that means. Don't worry about it, but I'm stoked about it. <laughs> okay, so you will be binging that. I will be. Yeah. I'm going over to one of my friends' house, and we're just going to sit in front of her TV and watch them all, and it's going to be great. All right, good deal. Well, that's it. I don't have any binging. We're like low on the binging today. It seems like we're very mild today. We are. But you know, That's I'm here right. for it. I'm here for a mild mild's time. Yeah. I had a tw I had something that uh, uh, was sort of a news, but wasn't news. And it was uh, somebody was given, I think Will Wheaton, who we all know is uh, Wesley, um, tweeted something out over, over the, about the football game. And, and somebody else responded to him about, listen, if you're showing all this uh, support for uh, sports, you're going to lose your nerd card. And he was like, no, not at all. He goes, think about it. He said, people dressing up, painting their face, wearing cheese on top of the head, that's cosplay. You know, they go and have all their cons. They get together and yeah. and root and for their fans and get autographs. He goes, it's no different. So <laughs> I, just, he, I just remember that. When you said stuff about the game plan, that made me think of that. 
he is a recurring special guest on yes and it's hysterical is he mean on it he at first is like on enemy is on sheldon's enemies list gotcha and he beats he like sacrifices his ability to win a card game because he felt bad for him and turns out will Wait, was lying did? about it sheldon Wait, did Sheldon sack. He Sheldon threw the game. Threw a game because he thought he Will that to win because he felt sorry for him, and then he about found out something, that Will and was, then Will was lying to him, and then he, he was there were even more him. enemies about it. <laughs> but the in the very the very last episode on Shut season up, eleven, Wesley. he and uh, Sheldon and Amy get married, and wait, one of the characters three people get married. Sheldon and Amy. Oh, okay. I got you. I thought you meant Will, no. Sheldon, Amy, and I was like, he, "How's that?" I work? said he, and then I remembered that you might not know what he I was talking about, okay, and so gotcha. I told you the Sheldon and Amy. Okay. That way, we don't have a misplaced modifier. They, I don't yes, even know what that means. They get married, and Will Wheaton really is understood. supposed to officiate. Yeah. But one of the other characters, Howard, finds a dog and then calls the dog's owner to say, "Hey, I found your dog," and it's Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill shows up. Does he and officiate? So Mark Hamill officiates the wedding, and Will oh, Wheaton wow. sitting in the back, just like super mad about it. <laughs> it I would have awesome. done the same thing. I awesome. would have had Mark Hamill. And I Mark Hamill is just like crying because he's like, "It's so sweet. You all love each other so much." <laughs> it was just really cute. It was sweet. Oh, that is great. It was fun. Mark Hamill. What about him? He's just such a cool dude. Well, I don't know about that. He's in a lot of stuff. No, like he like for like fans and stuff like that. Yes. Like he's genuinely like kind mm-hmm. to people. I, if I had to put my glasses off and I put like a hood over it and behind my beard, there I looked like him there for a while when he was the scruffy. When he was the scruffy, uh, mm-hmm. uh, second one. Yeah, whatever that movie. The second movie one. No, the first mm-hmm. movie one. The Force, Force Awakens. Awakens. Yeah. When you see That's him me. for like a hot second and he's just just like mm-hmm. hello. <laughs> yeah he's like there for like 30 seconds at the end of the movie that was you look like, like him then dad i was like what <laughs> this is taking forever to keep and you. they just like circle around him and we're like i know and they're like we see it? that it's mark hamill like, we gotta wait a chill. year <laughs> we gotta wait a year to get any more of that but okay we're you go. on a tangent um right. what did you pull for us this week dad well um today this week um I pulled, I've got a book that I'm not going to get anymore. Really? Okay. So yeah. a book we no longer are Want loving. So I started collecting Commanders in Crisis, which is by Image. And I really enjoyed the premise of it. They were like presidents from different multiverses of the we same talked about this. earth. And I liked it. Um, mm. Yes. And then they, the villain embodied empathy into a person and then killed the person so that empathy is no longer in the planet. Um, so I got is issue. So sad. I know. Well, I got issue five, and I'm just not liking the way it's going. It's it's um I got a little bit too much adulty stuff in it. How? Okay, so and we're gonna leave it like that. Okay. No, I'm 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 fine with that. But no, as a collector, mm-hmm. how do you choose? Because like, right? So you have a finite amount of time, a finite amount of resources for how many right. like comic books you can buy mm-hmm. and stuff like that. How do you like choose what's because like sometimes you just buy things just because they seem interesting, and so you start right. it, and they're like, "Hey, I like this." Exactly. But how do you choose? Like, what's a barometer that you use? Well, this has to do with just nudity. I, gotcha. I don't need to. I don't need to see that. No, yeah, I get um, that. And um, I, I didn't. I don't think it's necessary for the plot, which is a bummer. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I get it when they show that in some stuff, and it it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Not. I mean, but this is just. Too much. Kind of just there for no reason. And I don't, I don't, I don't, no, I get I'm like, that. Uh, I don't need that. I get and, that. And it's four bucks, you know, there's $4 I could use to spend on something else, okay. which brings me to my, so that's commanders in crisis. I'm cutting it off. Even though I think the premise was be good. I think they've gone a little bit too much with no, that I, kind I, of stuff. I, get that. I was just curious yeah. about like how you know what something you want to collect. Like, is that a weird question to ask? It, Here's the deal. So I also collected the Vampire Masquerade. Yes. Which the first BTM. issue I thought was okay. The second issue was okay. And then I was like, this is just too much for me. Yeah. But uh, okay. it was only going to be five issues. So I was three issues in already. Mm. And I figured I'll just finish it. 
just because okay. it'd be five issues. I have no idea how long this is going to go. So I just um, decided, decided I told, to stop. told uh, my comic book shop guy, Scott, I said, Scott, I'm done with this. Uh, you can take it off my list. I'm not going to get it anymore. It's just okay. too much, okay. which is funny because um, I picked up a book last week, not this week, but last week by image called deep beyond. And at first glance, I tried to look through it. Um, for those of you who don't know, I have an issue with my eyes that makes it hard to see things at certain times mm -hmm. during the day. And if they're really dark or really bright. Exactly. So this book had a lot of writing and it seemed, and it was so hard for me to focus on when I was looking at it in the evening. So mm -hmm. I just went back and re and try, I said, I'll try it again. Because, like in the daytime? Yes. And okay. I actually enjoyed it. Oh, good. Um, so I'm going to add that. I like the name. What off. is it about? So apparently what's happened, this is in the future, 2085, 85 is this years image, after. image Boom Studios? Image, Image okay. Comics. And um, so it is set in the future. Um, outside is sort of something's gone on wacky like mm. so are we um, underground or under no, the ocean we're in domes or stuff like that Ooh. and if you go out you wear a suit outside do you know that i've read this ya fiction book what was it called uh don't know out of the something dome like or something like that <laughs> is that right I'm, I'm gonna look it up well, under the, Into dome the evernight or something like that I don't know. There was a Google Stephen it. King book called The Dome or whatever, and I didn't much care for that at all. And a TV show. But so this is um, something happens in a submarine and there's like um, uh, terrorists trying to they actually just um, killed the president's son um, on accident. Someone released a contagion or whatever. And so now basically they are going to try to find the uh, one guy is going out um, to find out why this submarine that is working on this research to help cure everything, why it lost transmission. And um, the person who comes to help him out is the lady who was in the submarine's twin sister, who he had a relationship with and was going to marry her, but he didn't want to venture out and risk himself which his fiance did. And so it looks interesting. That's the first issue. There's a lot of work. Go. What are you going to say? Under the never sky. Under the never sky. Nice. I knew well, it was. This, I think the next one is through the ever night. This book has a lot of words. A lot which of words. I'm like here for it. Mm -hmm. I like it. It feels a bit more like graphic novel y to me when it's like that, when there are a lot of words. Yeah, there's a lot of words to say a lot of things, and it's set in the future after something happened in the year That's 2000. That's so cool, we live in domes. That's yeah, dope. Yeah, the, the, the um, quote on the back of the comic book says, we, we're hypocrites. We're surround, we, we've surrounded ourselves with fiction. We celebrate a lifestyle that's never been sustainable, one we don't deserve. So it has a lot of, you know, are that's we like, taking care of what, we're, what we have? That's yeah, type this of is, deal, so. It's like the same, like, I'm not kidding you, Dad. That's, like, basically the same plot line of this book that I read, this YA book that I read. Okay. Because, like, there were, they they live in domes, um, but because they can't go anywhere, they do these, like, alternate reality things. And, like, where you can, like, because, like, you can't, like, go for a the walk holodeck. outside. And so, yeah, like, you, they have, like, a holodeck. But what it's Bring done it is it's, like... Wheaton. It's like changed their brain chemistry and that they don't fear anything. Okay, that's weird. And it makes them go like. And you read this when you were what? How not old? Not good. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Was this one of these books that we were like, you shouldn't be reading that book? No, this was, this was past that. This was when I was like 16 or 17. Okay, well, that's fine. You were old enough to know. <laughs> no, it was a cool book. I like, I, I'm pretty sure that you bought a couple, one of them for me. <laughs> Well, that was a mistake. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it wasn't. That's mistake. all right. I bought books. comic books I shouldn't have. So I'm like, this is bad, but I stopped it. Okay. Um, so we have Deep book. Beyond, You're Cutting Off Commanders in Crisis. Another book. Sorry, I interrupted you. That's okay. Is by Vault, which is another independent. This is, this is up to issue three now. It's called I Walk with Monsters. Now, this is for adults only. It does deal with um, some serious stuff like um, child abuse. Mm. Um, and uh, this girl whose dad was bad uh -oh. and you there's something going on with um a corrupt politician that we think is an abuser uh oh but her brother who is older than her they've now been reunited they were separated her dad mm. who knows 
her dad's no longer living. Um, and uh, her brother turns into a monster and devours these evil people. So they're basically going out. The girl does the the heavy work. She's a young girl. And um, they're going out getting rid of these people that prey on children. And um, mm. the, the brother devours them. So now they're going after a corrupt politician. And the way they're doing it is so good. You never see the guy's face. You never see his name. And it's not like they're doing it on they are doing it on purpose, but it's like, you know, you'll see like a, a billboard vote for this person. And then there'll be a tree up where it says his name or like a bird flying where his face would be. And it's that same way throughout the entire comic book. Interesting. So, um, it is definitely for adults, not yeah, for you kids. You said for grownups only. For grownups only. But I really think it's, it's a, it's a good book. I'm interested to see where it, where it ends. Um, mm -hmm. But it does have some mature themes. So and some real realistic ways in which uh, people would respond to those themes yeah. in the book. So, so my last two are DC future state issues, um, which this, you are more and more a fan of, it seems. Yes. And no part of it. I was starting to get DC future state fatigue. You mentioned and Marvel that last week. King of black fatigue. You mentioned but, that last week too, but this has only got a month left. We're about over. This okay. end of this month and the first of March, I think first week. And then uh, DC is rebooting their comic books and it's called the, in, I can't remember what it's called. Infinite oh. Frontiers. Infinite Frontiers. That's cool. That's what they're calling it. They're so, so they're people are so good at naming things. Yeah, this is, so uh, we are going to get some of these characters that were introduced in these books. Um, the Teen Titans book is really hot right now because they introduce a new character named red X and um, who are they? Uh, it's a, he, he okay. is, is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Mm, um, we don't know, but he's with the teen Titans. He's actually with Nightwing, who mm -hmm. um, is super is not is Robin. The original, the original Robin. Correct. But he's now wearing a death stroke, the Terminator, which was an, a teen Titans villain from, from forever. Um, there's a lot of stuff that went on with Deathstroke to Terminator. He's been in many old Teen Titan books. And mm -hmm. actually one of the reasons why uh, Robin became Nightwing in the first place was because of a, um, uh, a um, mini series that happened within the, the, the comic book in the eighties where Deathstroke added a member to Teen Titans, infiltrated them and then betrayed them all. And, so, uh -oh. but now, now Nightwing is wearing his, his Deathstroke's mask, but the, hmm. the book is really neat how they pulled together. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Cyborg and Beast Boy are combined. It's, I don't know what happened. I think maybe they said it and I didn't hear it, but um, it's interesting. The other book that I'm really looking forward to, and, and I'll probably start collecting Teen Titans Academy is what it's going to be called. Okay. Teen Titans Academy. Out. Um and the Justice League, which has all the new versions of Super Superman, which is really Superboy, the new Wonder Woman, mm -hmm. the new Batman, uh, new Green Lantern. We mentioned briefly about Shazam last time, how mm -hmm. he was separate from Billy mm -hmm. Batson, um, which is uh, it, it. It really ties it into the Justice League book. So the Justice League was um, white Martians, much like. Uh, John Jones, the Martian Manhunter, they can okay. change the way they look and okay. mimic people. So okay. the white Martians are the bad Martians and they have taken on the personalities of the Justice League. So in the first book, uh -oh. you come to find out that the Justice League wasn't really the Justice League, it's the white Martians. And in this issue, uh, they are confronted by the real Justice League and the Justice League wins. And Good. Um, but what happens is, no, oh, Shazam was in T-Titans. I got mixed up. You're okay. So anyway, that looks interesting because I'm interested to see who's going to join the new Justice League. But go back to Teen Titans. Shazam picks up Raven and takes her in the Teen Titans back backtrack. Takes her into that place where Shazam comes from. I can't remember where it yeah. is. No, I'm with you. I'm I'm so, I'm vibing. And um, th and then that's why Billy Batson is guarding the door to not let this creature out. Um, 
Because so, Raven? I don't know. I haven't gotten all to it. I got to wait till the next it's issue of Shazam like to get it all. mystically. Okay, so listen. I have a comic book behind me called Miracle Man. So okay, anyone, I see it. This was, this was in the 80s. Miracle Man was put out by one of my favorite authors named Alan Moore, who also mm. redid Swamp Thing. He's one of my favorite. He's a little bit out there. Okay. But the Miracle Man was a a nod off of a character he's now owned by marvel called marvel man but they couldn't call him that and he had forgotten who he was and then um uh -oh. little by little it came back to him and he had to say the word atomic backwards and he saw atomic in water backwards and he says it and becomes miracle man and then realizes this is i've been sort of shazam but he had forgotten who he was kimito uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's exactly right. I literally had to write it and then write it backwards. And but like, what happens is he's phonics. Once he becomes Miracle Man, another one of the people from the Miracle Man family. Does it sound like the Shazam movie? It Shazam, sounds like the Shazam movie. Yeah, the but it's the same way. Um, who had been it was all grown up and still had his power. Um, goes to kill Miracle Miracle Man. Why? And he gets him to say the words and he turns back into a little boy. So, and it's like, do I kill the little boy? Don't hurt the or little whatever. boy. Or whatever. But anyway, so boy. I'm curious, much like the Thor comic book we talked about where Donald Blake has been stuck and he comes mm -hmm. back crazy because he'd been left there forever. Mm -hmm. Thor left him there. I'm, I'm hoping that nothing crazy happens to Billy Batson. Yes. That makes me think of when we read Kingdom Come. Yes, exactly. Yes, and Kingdom Come was a mini series where it just made me sad. I hope that that's Billy not true. had been grown up and brainwashed, but had never turned into Shazam. But this mm -hmm. is the other way. It's Shazam, who's never turns back to Billy. So yeah, that's my book. So I'm gonna give a yes to Teen Titans, Justice League, I Walk with Monsters, and Deep Horizons, and I'm axing Commanders in Crisis. Deep Horizons? Do you mean Deep Beyond? Deep beyond. Sorry, I don't know why I said deep. No, I was going to say. Deep horizon. I it's wrote. Deep I beyond. write it on a post-it note so that I can talk about it in our show notes. Yeah, deep and beyond. I was like, oh no, I wrote beyond. Is it horizons? Nope, you're right. Cool. Yeah. Do we want to keep talking yes. about comics? Um. No, let's come back to it. Okay. Let's talk so about the movie. We watched, uh, the Princess and the Frog. Yes, we came did. out in 2007, 2011, 2009, 2009. Ooh, I was right in the middle. You did. You did good. Thank you. <laughs> did you know Oprah was in that movie? Yes, I wrote that down. Oprah's Adora, the, mom she's the mom with like two, two exclamation marks. Look, Oprah is the hilarious. Mom. I, yeah. Talking to your microphone. That's what Sorry. You tell me. Sorry. Hello. Oprah's the mom. Yes. I did know that. And, and John Goodman is big daddy. Yeah. Big Daddy. That's funny. Charlotte is sweet. I She's literally just kooky, wrote. I, like I love her. She's wild and has silly dreams, but is a very good friend. So, go ahead. Tell us the premise of the of the movie. Okay, so the premise of the movie is we have this hardworking young woman named Tiana. Um, grew up. Um, Dad having to work, mom having to work two jobs, uh, grew up poor, um, but dad instilled a pattern of hard work into her life to like achieve her dreams. And so she's working two jobs to make money because she wants to create um, a um, <laughs> restaurant yeah. and she... Um, gets into hijinks and kisses a frog and becomes a frog. And the frog that she kisses is no one other than Prince Naveen. And then hijinks um, ensue country. because they want to come back to be human. And there's a shadow man who is trying Creepy. to get them to do He's certain things. the voice things. of Darkseed, by the way, in the cartoon. No way. Mm -hmm. Or Darkseid, however you want to say it. Spooky. And yeah. yeah, and it's just, I don't know, it's just really sweet. So this takes place, I don't know if you rec realize this or not, but on the tra trolley or whatever, it's, somebody was holding a paper saying Wilson elected, which means Woodrow Wilson, the president, was elected. He was president from 1913 to 1921. I was going to say, this is the 20s. So this is 
But you can tell um, that based on the costumes, Dad. Exactly. Um, so, um, an African American family in the twenties. Yeah. So um, there is. We move from plantations to small housing. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so basically, it starts. It starts out. She's like eight or nine. Yeah, it starts out. She's a kid. And then it. Turns, I wouldn't say I would. I would say she's seven or eight. I wouldn't say okay. she's nine. And then I'd say it takes. I'd say jumps fifteen, ten to fifteen years. Yeah, she's in her early twenties. Exactly. I would. Say. So that means it's between the takes place between nineteen twenty three to nineteen. Dad's doing mm, math. Was it World War World War One? One. He was the, the president dad... during World War One. Who your mom's grandpa was named after? Really. Yep. I didn't know Hannah. that. Mm-hmm. His no middle way. name was Woodrow. Yeah. I didn't know that. So, um, interesting. I love the opening after presents. where she makes gumbo. Hey, everybody, I made gumbo. And the dad says, you know, the thing about good food, it brings folks together from all walks of life. Yes. And I'm uh, for that because we love food. We love food. That's one thing our family does well. I, I, there are many we're things cook, our family We're does lookers well. and cookers. Oh, my goodness, daddy. Hey, if it's no. the truth, it's the truth. No. Yes, we are. I we're um, good cookers. Can I jump forward in time? Go in the, in the film. Mm-hmm. So yes. the Shadow Man is trying to convince Tiana to give him back the thing that he needs. Yes. Yeah, so basically, and so he like. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. No, he the Shadow Man. This is my issue with it being rated G. It's and the, the Shadow, Shadow Man. Man. The Shadow it's Man scary. is the issue. He's and spooky. It, it l- does deal with voodoo. Mm-hmm. So, it's New Orleans. Exactly. And so it's very, some of it is historically accurate. Hmm. Um, I mean, still, I like you go about down to today, New Orleans and there's still voodoo down there. What, when do you let a child watch this movie? Hmm. So, what do you think? Well, here's, here's something your mom said, and I'm going to butcher it. But she says, like, as a, as a play therapist, hmm. she feels that it is her duty to, to, to save the innocence of a child for as long as she can. Yeah. So does letting a child watch this fulfill that mission? Because you, you know, there is evil in the world. We know that. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. Part of it, some of it is, I don't know. That mm-hmm. is for each person to decide on their own. Yeah. At what age do you let, even though it is rated G for general audiences, there are some very scary spooky stuff. parts. There are spooky yes. parts for I mean, sure. He's got friends on the other What's side. What's he say? I got friends, I got on, friends the on the other side. side. And we ain't this... talking about the good side either. He got no, friends in the bad side. Friends on the other side. The music side. is fantastic. Oh, if anything, the... the music is fantastic. Can I can I tell you something interesting? Go. So his name is Dr. Facilier. Yeah, what does that mean? A facile in French means easy. Oh. His name and is it's... Dr. Easy. Dr. Easy. Yeah, so he basically the the prince is a freeloader. Yeah, his parents and cut him off, and so he parents cut him off. In he New has Orleans no money. He's with his valet, rich. who looked an Lawrence. awful lot looks an awful lot like the dude like from that Enchanted. guy from Enchanted. And I Dad, thought, if, yes, yes, I said if that's the same dude voicing it, so I had to immediately look up, and it's not, which would have been uh, hilarious. Bummer, if it that would have been. But classic. they look exactly the same. Exactly the and, same. And um, so the guy, the valet, and the uh, shadow man, the reach a deal to where. The valet will become the prince, and he takes a drop of the prince's blood and puts it in this little talisman. And he becomes, he looks like the prince. And the prince becomes a frog. Mm -hmm. So Because the whole thing with the shadow man is that you get what you want, but you lose what you had. It's like a monkey's paw kind of arrangement, right? Gotcha. So Mm -hmm. uh, when he was talking to Naveen, Dr. Facilier said, oh, you just want to hop to play, hop around place to place. And oh, that means green. That. Um, oh, and in yes. the future, it's the green that I see for you. It's and the green he that turns I see. into a frog. I wish I could sing that deep. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> turns into How's a frog. Say, what's the word he says? It's the green, it's the green, it's the green. It's the green, it's the green, it's the green, it's the green, it's the green I see. I can't get any deeper. That's bad. <laughs> but, yeah, so, right. So he has the talisman at the end of the movie. Um, they want to turn back to human and, and you have to kiss a princess. 
Well, Levine has Tiana to kiss has the, the talisman. You were going to talk about Tiana yes. having the talisman. So the thing, so she, show, the talisman is what keeps Lawrence, who's the valet, to be the prince a, and the, the prince, prince is a frog. And the, yeah. And so she goes to smash it. She's like holding it and she's trying to decide if she wants to keep it or if she wants to smash it. And but he Dr. offers Facilier, her. Yeah. Offers her everything that she wanted. And like shows her like this elab like shows her in this fancy dress and in this elaborate like room that's her restaurant and there's someone playing like there's jazz music that's happening and he Dr. Facilier messes up. He didn't know he's messing up, but he messed up. He showed her an image of her father and her as a child after they made gumbo together. Yeah. And it was just like, did you like look at how poor you were? Like like mm -hmm. this was an awful experience for you. And she's like, no. Which which is basically we, the the theme of the movie, the the yeah, moral of the movie. Yeah, you have everything movie. that you need. Exactly. If you it love what if you, you love want. people. No. Yes, it's not what you want. It's what you, He didn't what have what he wanted, but he had what he needed. Yeah. And he had love. Yeah. yeah. And so she he shows her this image of like Hey, remember this awful time when you were a kid? Like, look at how awful everything was. And she's like, are you kidding awful. me? That was awesome. That was awesome. Everything yeah. was great. And I think and that happens with everybody when you grow older. You'll realize yeah. that. I just thought oh, that gosh. was really sweet. And I it made me think sucked, of that. But now it's awesome. Yeah. And it, the 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 voodoo lady out in the swamp, what's uh, her name? <laughs> if, Mama Odie. <laughs> mo, mo, yeah, Mama Odie. If you realize her song Don't and the voodoo, right? the, the Shadow Man song. Are the same but opposite. Yeah, yes. They flip flop. Yeah. Because hers you know, is about like it's not want. what you want, it's what you need. And his is like need. it's not what you need, it's what you want. And if you just dig a little deeper, you'll find out who you are. Dig a little deeper. <laughs> we love the music in this, you guys. Yes. It's we have so been to good. New Orleans. And we have. I'm telling you, beignets are a way to a man's heart. <laughs> I have a video of you just eating one. I have a boomerang of you eating one, and you eating get like a beignet. You get bad sugar all in the, the way movie, down your face. Charlotte, who is the daughter, the rich daughter, mm -hmm. who is friends with Tiana, who is mm -hmm. of the poor daughter of a dressmaker. Mm -hmm. They are friends. Like they grew and up hanging out together, so they're pals. Because her mom would make dresses. Yeah. Even though there was a culture, cultural, and a social economic difference, yeah. they still were friends. Mm -hmm. which was something I really enjoyed. And um, like, again, like what I said, I, she is wild and her wants are Basically, silly. she wants to be a, she wants to be a princess. Charlotte does. Yeah. She wants, she'll do anything to be a princess. And at the end of the movie, um, she's the princess of Mardi Gras. Mm -hmm. So the frog says, if I kiss her, then we both turn to human, even mm -hmm. though the, the prince now loves Tiana. Loves Tiana. Yeah. And uh, Charlotte says, Oh, I'll kiss you. No, I'll marriage. kiss you anyways. Anyway, because like, oh, oh, so this, good. I want you all to be happy. And she's like kisses that frog, and nothing like happens. And she just like kisses it like a hundred times. There's lipstick all over that frog, and he's just going, "Ain't nothing happening." Mm. So, Dad, do what? you remember when I was a freshman in high school, mm -hmm. my ballet recital? Which one? My freshman in high school ballet recital. Well, I don't. What happened? Did I dress up as freaking Drosselmeyer no, in that one didn't. too? No, you didn't dress up like Drosselmeyer in this one. I danced. We had, we were. It was Carnival of Animals. Was the spring showcase, and I danced to Evangeline, and I was a lightning bug. Yes, Ray the lightning bug. Mm -hmm. That is a yes. I remember that. Did that was a good. So, Ten. so Ten. if you've not seen the movie. Watch the movie. Be cognizant of the fact that if you have smaller kids, you might have to explain things, mm -hmm. even though it's G. Um, but part of it is when they become frogs, they end up in the swamp. Mm -hmm. And then with they have Lewis to get and Ray. And they which is a uh Lewis is a alligator who wants to be a human so he can play trumpet. And he yeah, and, he's a saxophone, he's a trumpet. Ray trumpeteer. is a Cajun lightning bug. Now these there are caricatures in this movie, especially the three Cajun guys that are like oh, supposed man. to be the three Stooges. Basically, they're the three Stooges. Yeah, but man, eh, that's pretty bad. I don't know if you get away with that now, but um, yeah, that was pretty rough. Um, but the uh, lightning bugs in it uh, uh, going so down the bayou. That's the yes. worst song in my opinion. 
going down the bayou. Yeah, it's with the, the, the worst bugs. song. Yeah, but the Evangeline song, uh, Ray the Lightning Bug is in love with Evangeline the who shines star. so bright, but it's really the evening star. And um, so. But Ray. Uh, Ray, I don't want to say anymore. Uh, so this is. calls her Evangeline. This, oh, is this be... Disney's first African-American princess? Yeah, first black princess. Gotcha. Um, not the first princess of color because. Pocahontas. Uh, and Mulan. Mm-hmm. Is um, Mulan a princess? I don't think she's a princess. No. I, I think she's consider considered to be either. a Disney princess. And here's the deal. Princess has princess. such a negative connotation to some people. But I don't, I'm not. I, I like it. I'm here for. Give me any type of princess story ever. Listen, and I'm there for it. If but we're a child I would of say the Mulan king. is a warrior. Are you a child of the not king? Not a princess. You are a child of the king. So there you go. Okay. Well. Uh-huh. I'm not the king, but I'm a child of the king. Anyway, yeah. So there you go. But yeah, um, really cool. Next week, we're going to talk about <gasps> Brandy's Cinderella. We're going to watch Roger and Hammer's new watch... Cinderella. It's on Disney+. Plus. Then after that, we're going to watch a movie where they're shooting or something. Because No, we're not. Yes, we are. Disney Princess, this is forever. Brandy Cinderella is so good. Yeah, they. Um, it's so we'll, we'll good. talk about it next. We'll talk about it next week. Oh, I'm so excited! That's yeah. what we called it growing up. We would, we would, we'd go over to Sally and PD's house. Did I just not say we we're going to talk about this next well, week? Uh, go ahead, go ahead, finish. Well, I just want to explain why we call it that because we would go over to Sally and PD's house. Sally and, and PD are family friends who are um, basically have adopted our children as their godparents. She is Miriam, uh, our middle daughter's godmother and godfather, but they. Uh, Equally love all our children. Anyway, get. they're they're our family. Yes. Um, anyway, so we go over to Sally and PD's house, and there was a TV with a built-in VHS in their guest room, and she had she, D- Sally is obsessed with Disney, and so she has all of the Disney VHSs, and we found she the, had this I mean, on did, VHS. She had Rogers and ha- Dis- Brandy Cinderella, Roger oh, and wow. Hammerstein Cinderella, in Not on, had. she still has. I she had probably somewhere, and we would watch it. And we would just sometimes ask Sally, can we come watch Brandy Cinderella? Because it was Brandy. And that would be, that would differentiate. Well, we didn't have it. Yeah, you're right. You all didn't have it. Sally had it. And so we'd be like, let's go to Sally's and watch Brandy. It was a good way to get you out of the house. (laughs) Kids are gone. Because because she had like three different Cinderella's. There was like the original Cinderella with like the original like old, old timey Cinderella where it's like a horse and carriage is just in the sky doing like going up and down and well, they like, mean, not, not the cartoon one? legs like yeah, a live one. action no oh they had like she had a, like a live action okay. cinderella and then she had the cartoon cinderella anyways i'm excited about it at the end sorry i'm finished all right there you go yep so we got a couple more uh weeks in the month of february we're gonna hit Maybe. that one and then um there's another movie i want to talk about but we'll talk about that next week you mean week but, after next yeah we're gonna talk about another uh comic book character and mm-hmm. a comic book we read. Um, mm-hmm. This comic book character is named Black Lightning. Mm-hmm. Um, Black Lightning is a comic book character from the DC universe. Mm-hmm. I sent Hannah a couple of comic books to read. Unknowing to me, I <laughs> mailed her the first <laughs> appearance of Black Lightning in the mail. She's holding up currently. It came out in 1977, I think. I'm trying to What's see. the cover price on that book? Uh, 30 cents. 30 cents. That's a, the that's the a newest price. Black Lightning that you sent me, that's one of five, uh, three ninety nine. Yeah, but that came out like 10 years ago, I think. Oh, really? Maybe not that long. Maybe five years January ago. January 2018, rated T for teen. Oh, three years ago. So three years ago. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Black Lightning's name is Jefferson Pierce. Mm-hmm. He first appeared in Black Lightning number one, which Hannah has. I haven't. Um, yes, that's a fact. He is DC's first headlining black superhero. So first mm-hmm. superhero for DC comics um, to have his own book. Yeah. Um, just a little bit of background. Here's the deal. First of all, it's comic books. So they retcon his uh, origin story. He didn't story. have powers, but then he did have powers. Yeah. So now, now they're like, saying they're that. Saying, like, it seemed like when I was reading the three. Like the three old ones. From I, like I gave him issues one, two, and three from 1977. That it seemed like original. his belt was like giving him increasing powers. And eventually 
he would have power without himself. But when, exactly. uh, like, without the belt wearing. But when right. I read the other history of the DC universe, which we'll it talk seemed about as in a little if bit. he had always had them. That's what they're saying now that he had a latent meta gene, which is basically just a way to say mutant. they can't say mutant. But yeah, mutant. or maybe they could. I don't know. But in the 1977, he he did not. He had a belt that mm -hmm. gave him electric power. But he was a gold medal. Did you catch that? Yeah, gold medal runner. Decathlon. Olympian. Yeah, he won the decathlon. The decathlon. I don't know what the decathlon is. It's where they do ten. Uh, they they do ten track and field events, and they take the score from all those, add them up, and whoever has the highest score wins. Oh, so like big. Like so like big. shot put. Oh, uh, dang. long jump, high jump, hundred meter dash. That's a lot of things um, to be excellent at. High high jump, long jump, running, javelin, discus. I don't know. Yeah, ten <laughs> track and field account track and field events here's the deal this year we're supposed to have the olympics if it happens and I you can watch might. it and go hey jefferson pierce won that so um he originally um was a teacher somewhere and he had to go back to basically the the town was that it was metropolis but it is called the suicide slum mm -hmm. the south side of metropolis which was an underserved um, impoverished area of metropolis that you never see in the superman comic books mm -mm. and for his mother's funeral and when he got there he decided he would stay and be a teacher mm -hmm. eventually a principal mm -hmm. and he tackles right now in the first three he's just a teacher just right. a teacher there's nothing just about this man like he is he a is phenomenal a teacher, teacher. Yeah. and nothing he... about people who are just teachers you might have to no, edit that. No, not it. No, I'm not going to edit that out. <laughs> I immediately realized what I said and corrected myself. Yes. He's not just anything. He's a phenomenal teacher, a great coach, cares a lot yes. about his students. And one of his students dies, <sighs> a basketball star. Um, and a good Trying kid to do the right thing. In a, gets in, hit um, by a car. On purpose. Well, not yeah. really. It was an accident. They the run people... him on the street on purpose. He gets hit by a car on accident. Right. Right, on accident. There's mm -hmm. a He's gang called the 100. The 100, yeah. Um, so, and they're being led by this Tobias Whale, I believe. Who is, is looks like... He looks it, a little bit like Kingpin. So much of this was Daredevil for me, Dad. Really? Like, I was just reading it, and it, I like, I had so many Daredevil echoes while I was reading it. Well, the, fun, the interesting thing about this was this was, this guy who created it was creating it for Marvel, and then left and went... And um, DC wanted to do an idea that was terrible. Uh oh. Yeah, we're they we're not even going to talk about it. Okay. And then you, you said terrible like that, and I said I don't. You think can I look it up know. on Wikipedia if you want to read I'm, I'm what they pass. wanted to do. Yeah, pass. I'm going to pass. It was, it was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm going to pass on that. Um, so he went with this, and this is still it's a pro the 1977 book is a product of its time. You have to realize that he literally wears an afro wig. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's part of his his like, mask. His mask. It's like a mask with, with also a headpiece. Yes, and um, he tries to talk all mm -hmm. street smart or whatever that would be back in the seventies, um, and uh, because that's not who he was. Mm -hmm. um, but he uses that to fight crime. Yeah, and now he has his own. T there's a TV show. It's like. When did it start? On Rotten Tomatoes, I think they're on season three or four. I haven't seen it. It's on the it. CW through the Arrowverse. I don't, I don't. I'm not big in I the know. Arrowverse. I used to love it. I watched it for the first two or three seasons and then just completely quit two years well, ago. Well, it got Flash got weird. The issue is you, you had to watch it. when they started doing all the crossovers. It was hard for me nope. because um, I didn't DVR everything, so I literally couldn't watch it. Uh, mm -hmm. I hadn't watched. Um, they were like the one where they go back in time, in and out of time. I can't remember what, uh, Legends of Legends Tomorrow. Legends of Tomorrow uh, with and Rory. Then, and then Supergirl started to get intertwined with it. And then the Arrowverse, the, the Green Legends Arrow. Legends of and, Tomorrow was bad too. It wasn't bad. It I was not, it. it was not great. It wasn't great, but it wasn't Big terrible. Daddy Warbucks was in that and it was not. He was Firestorm. My, he's not my favorite I thing. Big Daddy Warbucks. And if I'm not mistaken, isn't he the dad in Brandy's Cinderella? Him and Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah. So we'll talk about that later. Ooh. Anyway, quit talking okay, about that. Sorry. Quit bringing that up, Hannah. You brought it up, Dad. No, I didn't. That was Go not me. Go back and me. rewind. Go back and rewind. I know it was me. So. Uh, That's cool that he has his own TV show, though. Yeah. 
94% on Rotten Tomatoes. Well, so it's doing good. Those CW like, shows, either they're like, everybody loves them or everybody hates them. Or everybody hates to love, everyone loves them or everyone hates that they love them. Yeah, they love to hate them. Yeah. That's what you're trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, that's That's go. what that kind of boils down to. It's neat, though, that they, it doesn't matter. I've said this before. I, li- I am grateful that I live in a time where uh, I never thought I would see any of this. I would yeah. never thought I would see any of my favorite comic book stuff end up on TV or movies, and now it yeah. has. So I don't care if it's terrible. At least it's there, and we can talk about it like this. This, so, the new one that you, not super new, but the 2018 one that you had me read was brutal. Yeah. Yeah. It was brutal. Um, my favorite Black Lightning stories are literally from um batman and the outsiders so after his they talk about that in the other history of the dc universe but you, yes. i didn't you didn't send me any of those comics to read well i didn't think about them until after i started no, doing some more deal. research on black lightning so in the 80s let's see when that is 83 mm. um batman leaves the justice league gets mad at him and creates his own team as he does because batman. batman and the outsiders and um, it, and then it had members where um, Metamorpho, which is a guy who can do become all the different um, elements on the periodic table. Um, Katana, which is an Asian uh, swordsman, and mm. she has the spirit of her dead husband trapped inside her sword. Uh, she's uh, in Suicide Squad, for those of you who watched. Yeah. That. Black Lightning, um, a guy named Geoforce which they created just for Rocks. this. And he's from a dip. Yeah. And then um, a girl named Halo, which has like a memory issue and Batman. So they were, they were supposed to be like uh, um, a multicultural outsider group that fights crime with Batman. Okay. And um, so, uh, and actually one of the uh, Batman recruits, it's funny because Batman recruits black lightning in the first uh, issue of uh, the Batman and the outsiders in the eighties to help save Lucius Fox, who has been kidnapped in the country of Markovia or wherever, wherever Geostorm mm. is, Geoforce is from. And mm. um, we talked about Teen Titans. You ready for me to bring this full force? Bring it full force, the Dad. The character Geoforce has a sister who becomes part of the Teen Titans and is evil and is recruited by Deathstroke to destroy the Teen Titans. Ugh. So I can't remember what her name was, but she controlled rocks too that's okay you don't have to know what her name is yeah so yeah so one of the books that i gave hannah to read is a book um called the other history of the dc universe yes it is a giant issue it is oversized yes um and um it is written by john ridley who who has done some amazing things so didn't he like write and direct 12 years yeah the screenwriter Yes. And he's doing a lot of um, he's doing a lot of comics right now. Um, uh, And um, so he. um, A a lot of stuff. Red Tails. He did Red Tails, uh, Three Kings, um, Undercover Brother. um, But the biggest one that he's known for, of course, is 12 Years a Slave. Mm -hmm. Um, So this book. Um, The other history of the DC universe, they've now, it's a five issue mini series, even though they're oversized. Um, Issue two just came out about two weeks ago. Who's that one about? Uh, um, I haven't had a chance to read it. Mm, So I have to, I have to go back and read it. But issue one is basically the story of Black Lightning Mm -hmm. as told by Black Lightning. So it is the other history of the DC universe. Mm -hmm. This book is really a book of prose with pictures it's yeah it's like an essay it is an essay about how uh people of essays color... wrong by all biography what is it when yes. you write about your own life autobiography it's That's an autobiography it autobiography with pictures and this one takes place from 1972 to 1995 mm-hmm. that's what the book in the front says this is the history of dc through the eyes of a marginalized person it and it's it's hard to read. Hurt. Yeah. Oh, I'm opening it right now, which is why you can hear that that weird sound. That's tape. It hurts to read. 
Oh my goodness. One of the it things was... That was I was like, he was really um hard on Green Lantern, John mm-hmm. Stewart. Mm-hmm. Um because John Stewart um was the first African American Green Lantern. Mm-hmm. And uh, Black Black Lightning uh says that he wouldn't even step foot on the ground that he mm-hmm. he just that hovered he came, he came to speak to his that uh the green lantern came to speak to his um pierce's class yes and he wouldn't even put his feet on the ground wouldn't even and put that, his feet it, on the ground maybe was he wasn't even doing that on purpose yes like probably something that he just did naturally um right. but it felt like a slight to him and their people and he yes. later on later on in he talks about like that they sit down and had coffee and talked about their stories and um they both recognize that hey we both have burdens and my opinion of you is wrong yes yeah and it and it it um it talks about it's it's a difficult comic book to talk about, talk about to be honest with you because I don't have a frame of reference. Um, I didn't I haven't lived this, and um, but I would definitely I would say that read this every, should read it. Um, Marvel. Now this is DC. Now mm-hmm. Marvel has done um, some books that um, highlight, um, like they did an indigenous uh, uh, people book. And um, they did a um, people of color book, um, but their book was basically a comic book. Mm-hmm. Um, this book, this comic book, has a, makes a statement. It's, There's a difference. Yeah, it's like an autobiography. It's like a scrapbook, if you will. That's a good way to put it. And what, how he felt about how he was perceived, and, and how, how the world perceived treated. him, and how he was treated with other superheroes like he talks about how he talks about how they let martian manhunter on the group who's not even from yeah that they like have a tribunal to see if he's can even be in it and like literally says in this like you'll let an alien be on your group but you won't let a black superman man be in your but you group. won't let up yeah are you kidding me like so he turns oh them down my goodness yeah he turns them down wild wild to read my computer just went wonky again I can see you. You're fine. Yeah. All right. Um, Yeah. So, yes, I see. I suggest anyone read this. And I chose this as one of my best books of. Yeah, we talked about this It's one of your favorite books of 2020. Um, And um, I'm interested to see how this plays out. So I you think that they all will be like they all will be about Black Lightning or it's no, 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 no. One is going to be about a different person. It's a different person. The next two is about two people. Okay. Mm hmm. Yes, and it deals with the Teen Titans. Um, there are younger, um, younger superheroes that I saw the cover and I was like, I don't recognize them. So hmm. I, I'm going to say this: I, I think Marvel does a better job of including um, different people groups in their superheroes. Now, I maybe people may disagree with me, but. Um, I, I really truly feel that way, um, but D- DC has always been just Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman and the Flash. I mean, that's what it is, and it, it, I don't think it's a problem. I don't think that's an, an, an innate problem with that they're doing it on purpose. I just think that's what those people are think. their main ones, and that's what and with Marvel, Marvel, their people have all their superhero people have all been people from normal walks of life that are pretty much. The X Men are a bunch of outcasts. Uh, Spider Man is a teenage boy. I mean, it's it seems like they do it better because it seems like it's more realistic. Does more that real life. Sense? Yeah, and uh, and whereas DC is just all fantastical. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so I would suggest anyone pick this book up. Really read it. Read the first um, the first one for sure. I haven't. I can't give you a a uh, you know, a, a yay or a nay it's on the seven dollars. It's for ages seventeen and up. So it's a rated M book. It's considered DC Black Label. I don't know why it would be rated M. Well, he curses in it. Yeah, but I mean, I think that I honestly think this would be good for a high school history class to read. Like, yeah, you could read. Yeah, no, I get of that. Course. 
I mean, um, really, this would be something that you could read and go back to see perceptions of how things, um, you know, I, there you go. Two thumbs up for me. Oh, you know what I didn't give? What? I didn't give my rating on the movie. Uh, five out of five. I give it four lightning bug tails. Four lightning butts. Lightning butts. Yeah. Daddy. Yeah. All right. So that's it for the comic book. Next, Ugh. we don't have a lot of time. WandaVision. Um, spoiler, 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 spoiler. Change my brain. Yes, WandaVision. It, we WandaVision. watched the last episode. Um, oh, I have opinions. Okay, so you were talking about the mutants and about how they are, um, like, basically hated. Right? It's not yes. safe to be a mutant in the right. United States. Right. I think that the way that they're setting this up is that that's going to happen still and that Hayworth is doing that. You think Hayworth could be Ultron. I think Hayworth could be Ultron. I think Hayworth could be Mephisto. I do not think Hayworth is a good guy. Because Hayworth I think, I think was chill. I, mm, I don't. I think he's okay. doing something. Hayworth was chill with Can Monica. He, no, because scrawls are good now. Are they? Who knows? Dad, who knows who's that. good? Dad, who stop. knows who's bad? Stop it. Okay, so Hayworth... When he first met Monica, there was some, like, friction, right? right. There were already mm -hmm. some friction because he felt like Monica was going to want his job, but that she was like, hey, I'm down to be a team player. It's totally chill. And that they, like, kind of – there was friction, but they, like, got along. They were on the same page. In the new episode of WandaVision, Hayworth has access to Monica's blood work. And Monica, it literally says that, sure, her blood had been – rewritten had been mutated twice like her dna yes, going in and out of the thing was yeah was mutated going in mutated coming out it's been mutated. Well, that means everyone going in and out but that makes me think that hayworth knew that she was changing and had decided that he did not like her and that's why he acted oh, in i the don't same believe way. that oh no i don't think I, I i think that he's bad i, don't I think, think so. agnes is still i don't, I don't think I, I don't think she's under wanda's spell I think she was I think she was lying because this is the first time that Agnes has shown up in the show titles like she is a name in the show titles. Oh, really? It was the first time Pietro had a name in the show titles and Agnes had her name in the what show. What was the titles. commercial? The sh commercial dad made me so sad. It was a little like claymation animation. Oh, yeah, it was horrible. This little kid yeah. who couldn't open the Yo Magic yogurt. Yeah, I was like, oh. what? Oh, it's it made creepy. me so sad. It's she creepy. couldn't control or open her magic. Mm -hmm. So I think that's her like saying, like, I can't get a hold of this. I can't get gotcha. my mind to wrap around it. I don't know how to use it or channel it mm -hmm. or open it in the way that it needs to be done. Gotcha. Um, I, I think am... Monica's a mutant. Uh, very sad for Billy. Like, can you imagine the trauma of hearing your dad, like... Disintegrate well, that's very in your um, head. That is very much like the comic book. Um, one brother is called Speed, and the other one's called Wiccan. Wiccan. So one does magic, and the other one is super fast. So, yeah, I love the costumes. They they look so much like the '80s comic book, the the Halloween costumes. It was really. He said, cute. "I know how you like uh, wrestlers, Mexican wrestlers." She goes, so "I'm funny. a Sokovian fortune teller." Yes, that's hilarious. What are you like, an old Red Riding Hood or something? I think I think that I I definitely think Agnes is still. I I think she was lying because she was three, so quick. She was so quick episodes, to say Wanda. Three episodes left. I definitely think that Monica's person is one of the Fantastic Four. You think it is? I, I do. Not. I tell you what. What if it's Doctor Doom? What if it's doom? Had you thought about that? It could be not. Victor. Yeah, it could be Victor. Doom. Ugh, I hope it's not. When are we going to find that out? Next episode? I Next mean, we episode. got three left. Because they were driving to go find him. And Darcy, before she got accidentally forced in the hex. Yeah. Because they left Which her Which is there, hilarious. I can't wait to see what part of the uh, carnival she's going to be. She's She'll be chained to something. 
Oh, I hope not. Or she'll like have the elephant or something like that. I hope not. Well, yeah. Ugh, because I like her. What did you say before she went into the hex? What? She emailed something to uh to Agent Wu. Monica to Agent 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 Wu. She uh, emailed him something, and I wanted I like to know how what they it is. Had that little fight, and she's like, "When were you going to tell me the plan?" Darcy was like, "You know, they like ninja chopped everybody." Yeah, they were oh! like. No, no, yeah. Yeah, I th- thought another piece of news. All you what? Teenage Mutant Ninja fans out there, uh, the second movie back in the 80s where Vanilla Ice does the ninja rap song, they're re-releasing the score on vinyl. So there you go. So yeah, do you have anything else on WandaVision? Um, the children. There were no children, there. and then there were so many children there. And Pietro said something about it. He mentioned it. Well, I've heard a theory that Pietro is just um, an extra part of Wanda's consciousness that she can talk to. Gotcha. But but she sees him dead. She sees him dead with the bullets in him from the where he was killed. And I'm so confused. And I so was talking to you about this. I so don't want them to take this phenomenal female character who is so strong. And she's wacky pages. I don't. There's she's so a, much more in her villain. life. She's a villain. And like the trauma of like sitting there thinking that you're going to die at any second as a child. She's been this way for being all throughout the comics. On, I just, ugh, it just makes me so angry. She goes from being awesome to wacky pages. I just made that up. Wacky pages. It just like makes that. me really sad. Yep. She could like, erase of course, the entire Of course, universe. let's take, of course. She's going to hex take, the whole planet. Ugh. Makes me sad. Actually, you and I aren't doing a podcast right now. We are like in the hex. You right are now. a hooligan. That's not outside true. the hex. We are like um, yo-yo masters. We You're can funny. do tricks with yo-yos. You're full of it. Not true. Oh, wait a minute. I can do that now. <laughs> I won a yo-yo okay. contest as a kid. You did. You walked mm-hmm. the dog. I did on gravel. Woo-hoo! Okay. That's it. So that's the it end. for us. The end. Tell okay. everybody thank you. Yes. Thank you so much for listening, sweet friends. Thank you for Nathan Dean Turner. Thanks for making our art, bud. It's phenomenal. Um, our um, intro music was created by Brockwell Nathan. Nathan. Ooh, words. Thanks for doing that for us, Brock. If check you him out on want, Spotify. Yeah, check him out on Spotify. Our research is done by yours truly and Todd Turner. Uh, mainly, do n- mainly not me. And I edit it all together. Which yeah, means yeah. we cut and paste. We cut and paste. Hey, we're thankful for you. Thanks for hanging with us, friends. We'll catch you next time. Next time, we're going to talk Black Panther. And oh, okay, we're cool. Watch, yeah, the comic. And we're going to watch... Uh, uh, Brandy Cinderella. It's actually called Rogers and Hammerstein Cinderella. It's on Disney+. Plus. If you haven't watched it, you should go We call it, it Brandy phenomenal. Cinderella. Okay. All right. See you next Peace time. out, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Our friends on Facebook, thanks for hanging Woo-hoo. out with us. Yes. Thank you, guys. We'll see you later. Awesome. How do I end it?